So in life, certain things happen. If you find it pleasant, you think it is fortunate. If you find it unpleasant, you think it is unfortunate. But suppose tomorrow morning you went to see the doctor. And the doctor told you, okay, you know, we've run the medical tests and we find that you're inflicted with an incurable sickness. You just have only about three to four months to live. You think, oh, this is a terrible tragedy. And it's very common that people who are diagnosed with life-threatening conditions, what happens to them is that they feel suddenly an immense intensity to be involved in life. So you become so tremendously involved in life because you know that the time you have left is very short. You know the expiry date is coming. So you just throw yourself without any hesitation into the process of life. Six months have passed and still you are just well. You go to see the doctor, you say, you know, I noticed my health is just has not declined. So the doctor reveals to you finally that, oh, you know, we've rerun the medical tests and we've discovered that we made a certain mistake in the medical tests. Actually, there's a cure for this disease. We know exactly what the cure is and here, take the prescription. Now you will think that this illness was a great blessing in your life because it has taught you a certain value of being intensely involved in the process of life. What we find fortunate or unfortunate is just human prejudice. If we really look into it, nothing is ever fortunate or unfortunate. If you say certain things are fortunate or unfortunate, these are really very short-sighted opinions. One reason being that we really have no idea how certain situations are going to evolve over time. What may seem like a blessing today can evolve to appear like a tragedy tomorrow. What may seem to be a tragedy today may evolve to appear like a blessing tomorrow. And this is really the point that I'm getting at. Most of the human problems that we experience in life, it's all just mind-created stuff. It's created nowhere else except at the level of the mind. Only a very small percentage of human problems are because of other reasons. Like, you know, I had a, I knew somebody who was working in a center for mentally disabled people who are suffering from various different kinds of psychological sicknesses. But their problem is that basically the mental illness comes from a certain permanent damage in the brain. So there's really not much that you can do with these people. They're pretty much hopeless cases. The most that you can do is just try to make their life a little bit as comfortable and as pleasant as possible. Otherwise, there's not much that we can do. You know, it's a bit like we opened up your brain. Let's say we just cut out a chunk of your brain. You will only be able to behave in a specific way. So these people are very small number of people are experiencing sufferings of this type. For the vast majority of human beings, most of it is just all mind-created stuff. It's just like a placebo. And when I say that it is a placebo, I'm not belittling it. For somebody who's under the spell of, the, of a placebo, the influence of it is very strong. It's very much a reality in his experience. It's just like you enter into a dream. Suppose in the dream, you dream that you are being chased by a lion. Now, even though there's no lion that's hanging out in your room, still the mind and the body produced all the responses as if you were being chased by the lion. That's exactly how a placebo is. Most of our problems function exactly like placebos. It reminds me of one man who was traveling. And first I should say, he lives in a small kind of village and he has two buffaloes. So every day he's taking out the buffaloes to graze in the field. So one morning he wakes up, he's doing his usual everyday routine, taking the buffaloes to graze in the field. Finally they reach the field and he notices something that the rope that he usually uses to tie the buffalo so that he does not move his place is missing. But he notices there's a hut nearby, and a 
the yogi lives in this hut. So he goes to the hut and he asks him, he says, you know, just on the way here, I noticed that I lost my rope. Do you have a rope that you can borrow, that you can let me borrow? I'll just go, use it for a short amount of time. And once I'm done, I'll just come and give it back to you. The yogi says, you're asking me for a rope? I, as you can see, I have almost no material belongings at all. But give this a try. Now you know the, the you know very well that you've lost the rope. But the buffalo is completely unaware. So here's what you can do. Just go to the buffalo and just pretend as if you are tying the rope. So he said, okay, it sounds a little bit strange, but I'll go and give it a try. So he goes, tie goes through the motions, pretends as if he's tying the buffalo and suddenly the buffalo just sits down and con continues and they're grazing on the field, he's not moving from one place to another. Finally the whole day has passed and it's time to go give the rope back. But the, uh, the buffalo is not moving and what to do with this imaginary rope? So he goes back to see the yogi and he says, okay, now the buffalo doesn't move from his place. So the yogi tells him, okay, now just do the opposite. Just like you have pretended that you are tying the rope, do exactly the same, just untie it. And the man said, okay. So he went, he untied the buffalo, and the buffalo immediately got up and continued on the way. Most of the human problems are exactly the same. Just mind-created stuff. And just because it's mind-created doesn't mean that its influence is limited to the mind. We should know this. Because there are really no sharp dividing lines between what we call the mind and the body. Whatever is happening at the level of the mind has a direct influence on the body. This is why if you just do a little bit of research, you'll see just how many sicknesses and diseases are all just stress-related, just because of the stuff that they are carrying in their mind. So, the thing about the human system is that the human system itself does not know any difference between what is real and what is imaginary. It's a bit like, I don't know if some of you have heard of something called phantom limb syndrome. Some people have heard of it. Phantom limb syndrome is a condition that happens to some amputees where they have one limb that's been amputated, but still in their experience it's very much a vivid reality. They continue to feel the presence of the missing arm or the missing leg. And it's a, for some of these people it's a very serious condition because it's just as if the arm has been cut off and they just cannot get rid of the pain. So a lot of research has been done as to how to provide some treatment for these people. So there was one scientist whose name was Ramachandran. He came up with a very ingenious device. He invented something which is called the mirror box. So this is just a box with one barrier between in the middle. So you just put your hand, the normal hand, on one side on the other side of the box, there's a mirror there. You just put your phantom limb there and look at the other hand and just move it and continue looking at the mirror. And suddenly the pain just simply vanishes because the brain is actually tricked into believing that this is your real arm which is doing the movement because it seems as though there's this feedback loop that's happening in the brain and it's, it still believes that the arm is still there. So how to cut off these signals? So that's the way that this mirror box works. And it demonstrates exactly the same thing. Left to the human system itself, it really knows no difference between what is real and what is imaginary. This is why there's something in yoga which is called viveka, which means intellectual discrimination of the intellect learning to you how to train your intellect in such a way that you can have a very clear discrimination in your awareness between what is real and what is unreal, what has roots in reality, and what is just your own mind-invented stuff. 
so so one part sorry so one part of what's involved in yoga is just developing this quality of discrimination between what is your true nature and what are the activities of the body and the mind right now it's all jumbled up you're identified with the body so you think you are the body you're identified with the mind but you think you are the mind but just look at this body this body is external to you that much you can understand but if your attention just starts to become a little bit more sensitive there will become a clear discrimination in your experience that even the mind is external to you so what is what is it which is inner what is an what is your inner reality 